Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are continuing on in a multi-step progression to help you learn or relearn how to walk all the way up until the point where you can walk confidently and without fear of falling in the community. So if you're just now joining us, I will put links for all the videos in this progression in the description below. But today what we're doing is actually part two in our walking progression where we've progressed now to going up and down stairs. So part one of this stair progression, we went through how to prepare your body for a step two walking pattern, which is usually the first step or in the safest way to go up and down stairs. But I do get requests sometimes on how to be able to do like a normal stepping pattern or go step over step. So that's why I'm including this part too. This is extremely challenging. So in no way am I suggesting that anyone who has suffered a stroke or has moderate movement impairments due to Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis, in no way am I suggesting that you should do this. This is really for those people who have minimal maybe uh, movement problems due to a neurologic condition and you're someone that I would consider is really high level that I would even suggest attempting this method. So, but for those of you that are really high level and you're at this level, everything we've talked about in this progression, you really need to have at an expert level. So you have to have good hip control, knee control. You absolutely have to have that 10 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion that I said was recommended but not required for the step two pattern of going up and down stairs, but absolutely critical for this one. When you're stepping that uninvolved leg down, you cannot do this if you don't have that extra 10, de 10 degrees of ankle bend. So definitely need that in order to be able to do this progression. In addition, you really need that eccentric control that I talked about in last week's video, which is basically being able to lengthen a muscle as it's actively working, which is much different than a concentric contraction where you're just shortening the muscle. This is a little bit more demanding, a little bit more challenging, and not really something that you ever have to do to be able to walk. So it might be something that your body just just can't do yet. So definitely make sure you practice this because your muscle is lengthening as it's staying active to lower your body down to the next step. So when you're going down stairs, you need to be able to have this eccentric control. But that's one of the things that we're gonna go through some exercises today to really make sure that you know that you have that before you actually attempt this on actual stairs. And now let's go ahead and get into the exercises. So very, very similar to all the exercises that we did in last week's video. So definitely make sure that you can do everything in that video very well before moving on and attempting this type of pattern. But the one thing that you're really, really, really gonna wanna work on is can you get your involved leg backwards on to a step going from a four to a six to an eight inch step, just like I've done in the other progressions. And can you hold that? So you may not have known that you can't do this until you try it because you literally don't need to be able to do this for anything up until this point, including walking. But can you get your foot up on that back step, your involved foot, and let that knee bend. So I've talked about this in a lot of videos and I actually think I'm gonna do a whole video on dissociation, so I hope you all will look forward to that. But I talk about dissociation a lot where one leg has to be able to be relaxed and be bent while the other leg is straight or they your legs need to be able to do opposite things at the same time, which is sometimes challenging after any type of damage to your brain. And this is gonna really challenge that or this is gonna really ensure that your body can dissociate. So, you might not have the active knee bend and that's okay. Just somehow get your foot up onto that step. But the critical part is, can you keep your 
uninvolved leg straight and let that involved leg bend. And I would do this over and over and over again. And then the next exercise in this progression is can you start on the step and step down now with your uninvolved leg. So this is not something we did in the previous video because we always led with that weaker leg, but can you step down? I highly recommend that you start with a very low step, even a two inch step, but can you get that uninvolved leg forward first of all and clear the edge of that step? And do you have the control, the eccentric control in your involved leg to be able to lower yourself down without that knee buckling or without that involved leg giving out on you? And again, start with maybe even a two inch step and build up from there. And then just to take it one step further, can you step it your uninvolved leg down and then can you step it back up? I like working on this one, even though you're never gonna like go backwards up the steps. But again, I just push the difficulty a little bit more when we're in a safer environment or a safer setup, i.e. the ground versus being up higher in the air. Can you do that here first? And so again, starting with a lower step and then progressing up. And then the final step would be, and we did this in the previous video, but we did it with the legs flipped. Can you step your involved leg up onto the step and step your uninvolved leg all the way up and over and then all the way back and doing those repetitions. And I would get really, really good at every single one of these exercises before I even thought about attempting stairs with a step over step pattern. But I know there are some of you out there that wanted this video, so that is why I made it. It's just for you guys, but be safe. And then just like I said last week, I love the ramp. Now, the goal when you're practicing up and down a ramp is are you really getting that uninvolved leg all the way forward? Because you really need to get it past your involved leg in order to be able to clear a step to do that step over step pattern. So keep practicing on a ramp to make sure that you can do that. It's also working on that eccentric control when you're going down the ramp is you have to be able to slow your body down as well or you have to be able to let that muscle lengthen while it's still active in order to be able to step down that ramp. So really, really, really get good at this. Do it over and over and over again. Now, I've also gotten this question is, I don't even know why someone would wanna do this because I don't even do this unless I absolutely have no choice, but some of you want to know how to go up and down stairs without a railing. And again, I absolutely always use a railing, so I'm not really sure unless there's some of you out there just that just like to challenge yourself. Uh, so I'll just include it here. But my suggestion or what I would work on is put a step close to a wall so that you still have something for balance without anything to like pull up on. Cause that's the biggest thing. It's that you get in the habit or you get, you get used to pulling up on that rail. So step one would be to just be able to get comfortable again going up and down a step without pulling on the rail. So my suggestion would be get near a wall so you still have something there for support if you lost your balance. But again, you're taking away that ability to pull up on something and then just put something like not stable that's not bolted to anything in your other hand. So a walking stick or I use these PVC pipes, a PVC pipe in your other hand to give you a little bit of support, but yet it's still less than a handrail. And then if you wanted to progress it, the way to progress this would be to get rid of the walking stick. I would still keep the wall there. Again, I just really don't see the point in doing it unless you're walking into like a courthouse. That's the only place I can envision where I ever see stairs that really there's no railing on either side. And in that case, I would just 
phone a friend <laughs> and have them come over and stand next to me or give me a little bit of support when I was walking up and down those steps if I had any type of movement problem at all. But yeah, so I would just always practice with that wall there and get to a point where you can do it like a hundred times without leaning into the wall or using the wall for support before I ever attempted to go up and down stairs without a railing. But anyway, just threw that in there at the end because some of you do ask. So there it is. That would be my suggestion if that's a huge goal of yours. And then that is it for this video. So again, just to recap, this is to relearn how to go stairs step over step. Most important, you really need that eccentric control or the ability for that muscle to lengthen as it's working. So that should be the take home point from this video. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. If you haven't signed up for my newsletter yet, link is in the description below. Links to all the videos in the series are also in the description below. I enjoyed spending time with you all today. I hope you all have an excellent week and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.